Shalom and good day all, this is TKLM29 back again for another indie comic review and for this indie comic review I'll be covering Ghost Machine issue 1 which has um, a makeup of about 4 separate stories in this or 4 or four story categories and um, for story 1 it's got about 2 separate stories but I'm reviewing them together as one story uh with story two i think it's got about one story to which i'm reviewing it as a whole story three which has about two stories but i'm reviewing it as one story and then we have story four which again it's got one story and i'll be reviewing it at that particular story so Jumping in the first things first, does this cover in any way, shape, or form connect to something that is happening inside with these stories? Sure enough, it does, to which it, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. So now we'll move into the internal contents of this particular issue through Ghost Machine, and a big thanks to Jeff Johns, um, Peter J. Tomasi, and also the other um, creators who worked on this particular issue uh, just to get new readers interested in the material that they're wanting to offer uh, comic book readers including myself and many others so as we open this up uh, we get a bit of a look at the inside as to who is involved in the project Now, this is the rest of the internal con or the table of contents. And as you can see here, um, I'm covering the unnamed under one whole story. Um, Rook Exodus, I'm covering as one whole story because it practically is one story. Then we move into uh, what Peter J. Tomasi is bringing in. And uh, I will bring up something once... Um, we do move into the Peter J. Tomasi one um, in regards to the story racing and art and review, or the review. And we also have Hyde Street, which it looks like it's got about two stories in it. And we do get a or two or three stories, but I'm still reviewing it together as one story. So let's have a quick look at some of the contents for that connect to the um, area of the unnamed. So we end up meeting the character of Geiger, which is quite interesting. We of course meet one of the red coats, but one thing I will happily admit is that I also like that they include um, information about these characters and where things take place on a timeline and last but not least where Geiger and Redcoat meet the area of the particular timeline and yes we do actually get to see a picture of the northerner now this is a great addition to this particular I wouldn't say it's a one shot but more so a oh what's the word I'm thinking of an introduction to Ghost Machine itself. There's the Nor Northerner. As well as the Red Coat. And of course the present day um, president in the story. Sarah Nash. Now for this first one. Um, I gave the art a 7.5 out of 10. As I quite enjoyed the art. And a 7.5 for the story. Now it's time to move into Rook Exodus. And as you can see here, we've got quite an interesting appearance for the character of Rook. Some of the things that the character is involved in, uh, along with their friend Swine. And last but not least, towards the end. Now let's not forget our introduction to the characters. 
as we get a bit of a synopsis as to who they are and uh, along with the history. And last but not least, the character of Direwolf, which is in fact the female. And I look forward to see how they will continue this story with this particular uh, story of Rook Exodus. So before I finish off, I gave the art for this story a 7 out of 10. And the story rating also a 7 out of 10. Now it's time to move in relation to the Peter J. Tomasi story. To which there are two um, key stories in this. First has to do with the Rocketfeller family. And we get to see one of the members of the family. And we will actually get to see who all these members are. Um, after I show you through this. And of course they work on arranging a trip. And uh, I must say. Um, when did Damien get in here? Uh, especially Grandpa Damien. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> of course we get to see him go on their trip. Until certain things in their trip changes. And it looks like they might get uh, invaded by a... Oh, um, oh, no, no, no. They're watching Junkyard Joe at the drive-in. <laughs> and then we move into the characters of Hornsby and Halo. And we get to get a bit of an invitation into their lives. We get a bit of an idea what both of them like. And last but not least, we move towards the end. Of course, now we meet the family of the Rocket Rocketfellas. And as you can see here, there's quite a number of characters that make up the family. Um, number three is the character of Richie, who is uh, their elder son. And of course, their daughter, who is Ray. And we've got Rosie, Rodney... <laughs> Roland, Rachel, a lot of ahas in this family. <laughs> and last but not least, we move into who the characters are of Halo and Hornsby. Of course, we get to meet Rose Hornsby and Zachary Halo. Uh, we also get their ages, their heights, including their backstories, and also character uh, other additional characters. For this, I gave the art for both of them a 7.5 out of 10, along with the story a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to move into Hyde Street. Oh my goodness, who remembers seeing this stuff in comics? And of course here we have one of the younger characters in this particular story who is reading the Rocket Fellas. As a bit of a meta experience in the story. <laughs> and of course we meet another character. And last but not least we slowly move towards the end. One fantastic thing. We get to see what's happening uh, in relation to um, the actual stories. As to when they're coming out. And if I were to add anything into my list, um, I'd definitely add the Rocket Fellas. Um, probably Hyde Street and also Hornsby and Halo uh, because they're the ones that have my main uh, interest. And to finish off for the rating of the last story, uh, for the art, I gave a 7.5 out of 10. And last but not least, I gave the story a 7.5 out of 10. As to how much it actually um, intrigued me. And I wouldn't mind checking uh, these ones out. So until then, let's keep it colourful. Oh, hold on. I was going to add something at the end of this. Having to do with Peter J. Tomasi. Because you have some people out there, especially on YouTube, um, saying that, Peter J. Tomasi only knows how to one, uh, write only one type of style. That's not completely true, and that is a complete fallacy and lie. Why? Because, number one, 
He has written things in DC Comics, such as an issue of Young Justice. And the thing that they sort of like to hold on to is that, oh, he only does family-related stuff. Okay, what's wrong with that? (laughs) And the thing is, he doesn't always do family-related stuff. He's also done Nightwing. Uh, to which you can also get a trade paperback on that particular story that he's done. And it centers all around Nightwing and also some of the things that he's doing in that particular time. He has also worked on the Green Lantern Corps uh, in DC Rebirth. Yes, we know that he's done Batman and Robin. He's done the Super Sons. But he has actually done other types of stories outside of family stories. So until then, let's keep it colourful and have yourself an awesome day.